Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing this problem. In this problem, we are given a string which would only contain lowercase characters, and we need to find the first character with the occurrence as two. Okay, so let's do what is said on the sample test case. Okay, so we know that G here is one, so I can say that yes, G here is one, and then I have E. Okay, so E here now we have encountered as one. Then the second E, so E would get added. Then second K, K is not there, so we would initialize K with one. Then S, and we would write S is equals to one. Okay, then we have F. F is still not there, so we would say that F is equals to one. Then we would go to O. O is still not there, so we would say that O is equals to one. Then we would go to R. So R is still not there, so we would say that R is equals to one. Then we come across again a G, okay? So which is this is this, and this again E, so we would have again one, then again one, and then K. K is already there, so we would have here, and then S we have here itself. So now let's start checking from the very first itself, okay? So if we start checking from the very first itself. This character has a occurrence two or not? Yes, this character has a occurrence two. So we would say that yes, this is the very first answer of that because that is the first character from the left hand side which has a occurrence of two. This is what we need to find out to solve this problem. So what we can do is to solve this problem, we can start off. Suppose we are given G double E K S. So what we can do is. We can have a I point, okay, as well as a corresponding J point, and we would move from it on all over the string, okay. So we would simply has like this for I is equals to zero, and I is less than n, n being this length of the string, and then we would have again a for loop where J is equals to zero, J is less than n. And j plus plus. Now we would simply have a if condition that if i is not equal to okay, not equal to j, and s of i is equals to equals to s of j, then we would say that yes, this s of i is the answer. We would simply say that we would simply iterate from i to j. We both kept it very generic that yes, the first one would also go from i zero to n. Next one would also. But what we did is see even if we have just one a and i is also equals to zero and j is also equals to zero, then both would be pointing at the same position. Now to not have this condition, what we did was we saw that if i is not equal to j, then only we would have this comparison. That if after that if i is not equal to j and s of i is equals to s of j, we would increment the count or we can increment the count if we need to count. But here according to this question, we would simply return the answer that see this is the character you were trying to find. At the end, if you are not able to find, that is up to you. So this for loop. Is going for big O of n. Now for each iteration, we are again doing big O of n operation. Why big O of n operation? Why? Because see, this is just checking the condition. So this is conditional statement, and we are just doing a comparison. So one character has constant time. So for one iteration, we are doing big O of n comparison. Because suppose we are standing at G. So the next J would go from G E E K. So for one iteration, we are doing big O of n operation. So for n iteration, we would be multiplying n on n operation. So we would be doing n square operation. Okay. And what would be the space complexity? The space complexity would be constant because we are not using any auxiliary space here. Okay. So let's move forward to the next idea that is hashing. So the very first idea is that yes, we would count the occurrence of each of the characters, and then we would again start from the very first string, and we would check which is the first string which is having a count of two. Okay, so the first character which is having a count of two, we would report that yes, this would be the answer itself. So just I did the dry run. Okay, so now there is one more thing what we can do is instead of taking the help of unordered map or ordered map like these all things, we can take use from a. To Z. So as you know, or even if you don't know, I would tell you that that each A to Z is associated 
with the ascii code okay whatever be the ascii code suppose you don't know the value of the ascii code okay so you don't know what is the ascii code of a or b or suppose you are not able to remember the ascii code of a that is absolutely not an issue why because suppose ascii code of a is equals to x so what is important is the ascii code of b is equals to x plus 1 ascii code of c is equals to x plus 2 ascii code of d is equals to x plus 3 so we can take advantage of this to show you how this is working i would show you that okay so okay now let us go back to the code editor what i would do is character a is equals to the character a and we would simply say that int val is equals to the character a and we would see out the value of val itself now let us see the value of val so see the value of a is equals to 97 now let us see the value of b according to my assumption the value of b should be 98 the value of b, c should be 99 the value of d should be 100 and the value of e should be 101 so this is what you need to remember that the consecutive values would be the previous value plus one now let's make it b and let's again run it so this is 98 which is absolutely correct now let us just confirm it for the value e so let's do it for value e see 101 so what we can do is i will just tell you so what i can do is to hash the value still the value z what i can do is i can have like this thing okay 122 so i can simply take an array of 123 and i can start hashing the values okay i can start i'll take help of the index okay i would take help of the index but what i can do is i instead of having size of 123 I can have more simpler approach that is i would subtract the value of a i would subtract the value of a okay so if i subtract the value of a a is equals to 97 so 97 minus 97 is equals to 0 this would be equal to 1 this would be equal to 2 this would be equal to 3 this would be equal to 4 101 minus 97 is equals to 4 so we can say that we are able to map a to 0 b to 1 c to 1 so to hash the values if we subtract the value of a we would just need an array of 26 and we would be able to hash the value this idea is used in a lot of problems so make sure you are very clear with this idea even if you're not clear consider asking me on linkedin i would i would be more than happy to explain you or extend the idea to have you explain okay so now what the idea is that we would suppose have g e e k okay g e e k so i would simply say that yes g has a count of one e has a count of two k has a count of one how we are doing that i would show you okay so suppose we have this then again we are coming back and then we are again started iterating then we would check now it might be a scenario that the last character is the character which is having double occurrence so what we are doing is in the first iteration we are counting the digits in the next iteration we are seeing which is the first character which is having that so I would tell you the what is the worst test, worst scenario so in the worst scenario we need two iteration first to count all the occurrence which is completely fixed the second one that it might be a scenario the last character is having a count of one other characters are having a count of the last character is having a count of two all the other characters are having a count of one so in the worst scenario you would need two passes to do that okay and what is the space complexity space complexity still remains big of one that is constant because we are just using an array of size 26 now can we do this in one pass suppose if this is an if this is an online assessment yes doing this would solve the purpose because the time complexity will still be big of n but suppose you are asked this question in an interview okay now suppose the interviewer has told you yes doing this in two pass doing this by doing two iteration is possible but can you do this by doing just one iteration can you do this or not yes we can okay so i would definitely show you the idea behind this so just let us take this one so suppose we have g e e k s and again we have g e e k s okay so let us mark the indexing also because we are given a string also 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so what i would do is i would keep a counter okay i would keep a counter 
suppose the answer variable okay i would initially have that with hash why i would have it with hash because we know that if nothing can be done we would say that yes the value is hash that is given in the question and what we would do is i would tell initially because suppose we want to find i would initially have the occurrence as a very large value suppose 100 in practical what we can do is we can take int max or we can just take value of n plus 1 which would solve the purpose now let's see it very carefully we would again take an array okay we would again take an array so this is the first time i am occurring g so i would map g is equals to 0 okay g is equals to 0 now i see e so i would say that e is equals to 1 so now then i again see an e now this time I, e is already there e is already there so what i would ask is if the previous occurrence of e is less than the occurrence that is already there we would update the answer so yes previous occurrence is one which is better than 100 so we would update the answer okay we would update the answer 100 we would update it to one and we would update this with also e okay now we would leave this as unchanged okay then we would come to k k is not initialized so we would simply say that k is equals to 3 next we come across s s is not initialized we would come across and say 4 now g is again 5 so what we would see is we would see the last occurrence was g was already there so last occurrence is 0 so we would say that yes 0 is better than 1 so let's go with 0 only so we would update 1 with 0 and we would update this value also okay this is done next we come across again e so what is the previous value of e 1 1 is not better so we would simply ignore e is not better we would simply ignore k k's last occurrence is 3 which is not better than 0 so we would simply ignore that because we want the minimum value next we come across s the value of s4 is greater than z4 which is not a better value so we would simply leave that at the end we have just complete one iteration and we have the answer stored in the answer variable which is just by doing one pass we are again not iterating on the string but in one iteration only we are able to save the value okay so as the concept of hashing we talked about as here also okay and this brute force i have already coded the hard one so i don't think this is required and all the concept that is discussed here would be discussed here also here we are just counting the occurrence here we are saving the index so the main ascii code concept we would use that so let's code this one okay okay so what we would do is we would simply have int n that is we would be iterating on the size so it's best practice that we save the size next what we would do is we would initialize the position with n plus 1 okay just one more or you can initialize with int max and then i would say the char answer is equals to the character hash why because if we are not able to find the value that means we need to return the hash because if there is no character with the occurrence as 2 we would return the hash value only now what we would do is we would initialize a vector of int okay and we would initialize the size as 26 and we would initialize the initial value as n plus 2 okay now we go down and we start iterating by using a for loop and i is equals to 0 i is less than n and i plus plus okay so if f of s of i subtract the value of a why because to get a mapped with 0 okay b mapped with 1 to have this thing if that value that is already previous value is less than pos if that previous value is less than pos that means we need to update the value because we got a better answer that we have already stored so we would say pos is equals to i okay we would store the first occurrence pos is equals to so we would store the first occurrence so f of s of i subtract the value of a okay first occurrence we have stored and we would say that answer is equals to s of i okay that means we were able to update the answer but now suppose that value is not initialized okay 
so what we would do is we would simply have s of i minus the value of a and we would initialize with the occurrence okay and at the end we would return the value of answer variable now let us just compile and then see how many errors are we making <laughs> We are getting a correct output of the sample test case. Now let us submit this and see if we can get an AC or not. And yes, we got an AC. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day. If you were there till the very end of the video, consider liking the video and commenting the video for better reach so that this work can be justified. Thank you.